Hi guys, Cloak Fiend here again, and today we're going to be uh, acetoning a larger print. Normally I've got small ones, but I thought I'd just show you how I do it on a larger scale as well. So we're going to take our acetone. That will do. There you go. That's how much acetone there is in there. So take your brush, just soak your brush in it, and make sure you've got some nit nitrate gloves on or something. I forgot what they're called. And that's it. So uh, what you want to do basically is coat the object in a way where you don't leave any patches because if you get patched then you'll be able to see that patch really annoyingly and it might not get done the second time around so uh, best to get everything done first time. Anyway this is what I'm going to do just go all out and um, try not to let it sit in the gaps too long as well because the white residue that forms can get quite irritating to remove if it's too intense. Um, the main thing is to get it everywhere so you don't have any areas that you haven't done like behind all the little now I can feel my glove is actually starting to melt now funnily enough And that's that. I've gone quite heavy on this one just because it's quite flat and the layer lines might be quite visible and I might as well do the back for for the hell of it. Why not? It's quite weird looking anyway. I printed it kind of like that just to get more layer, layer resolution as opposed to just printing it flat in case you're wondering why but there you have it. Alright, that's pretty much it. There you go. Now I just let it sit there and uh, I'll be back in a bit. In fact, I'm just going to put it here and uh, and then I'll unpause the camera. I'll just come back to it so that you know I haven't tricked you and moved it or anything like that. All right, there's my gloves, by the way. So um. If you use a lot of acetone, they do tend to tear after a while, so don't pour them in too much. In fact, I'm going to try and get those... So I'm just trying to blow the bits out of the cracks, because um, otherwise it, all this white stuff actually gets quite solid, and you have to get a scalpel to kind of scrape it out the gaps. Anyway, I'll be back in a bit. All right, so there we go. That's how it came out. A little bit closer than the white. The white areas are actually all right. Maybe it's just an illusion. Yeah, it, can, it tends to be a bit of an illusion as to what's messed up and what's not because it's almost like contouring women's face makeup. It kind of looks like their faces are a certain shape when they're not, just like here. So it looks like there's loads of wrong with it, but if you spray it, it will look all fine. But again, it's trial and error, and you just have to see what works and what for you and what kind of doesn't. And the techniques of cleaning up, for me, generally just involve getting a scalpel and just scraping in, in all the little gaps and stuff like that. And that's about it. It looks pretty smooth to me. Um, so yeah, I can't see any layer lines as such. Uh, but uh, again, I'd make sure you leave it for about an hour and then brush over it, do all that stuff, and yeah, you're good to go. So there you go, your smooth model. That's the back, I'll just show you the back. There you go, that's what it looks like, with the three supports, the infill as well, but yeah. So there you go, it's f that's how it came out. All right, so here we are again with the piece. Um, yeah, you got all these white, kind of areas which can get a little bit annoying um, I've kind of gone around with a scalpel just cleaning it up so uh, that's what I'd recommend you to do so um, I've done this side already so i will kind of just briefly going to show you kind of what I do on this side here to highlight it but it kind of forms this it's a residue that forms if you leave too much acetone on your PLA or color fab PLA should I say or PLA PHA whatever you want to call it and um, yeah just go around literally as you can see 
Like even here, if I go with my finger, you can see it kind of, it marks it a little bit. Now you think, oh no, it's gonna, if you're gonna paint that or plate it, then these marks are not deep enough to be seen by, you know, they're, they're probably like 0.5 microns or, or even less than that. It's like really subtle. So I wouldn't worry about the, the kind of, you know, the subtle marks. So just go around all the kind of, kind of recesses or the dips like here just go around with a scalpel just kind of clearing out that white mess and I wouldn't worry try not to jab the needle in because obviously uh, or well not needle but the scalpel but don't worry about scratching it too much well try not to scratch it at all really but don't kind of run the surface on, run the needle across any plain surfaces because you will subtly scratch that, you don't want to do that. You can do it with your finger now if you want, but not with the scalpel now because it will damage the print, which uh, this was about 40 hours I think, or 36. Even these main ones in the middle, just kind of just go over them with the scalpel. Kind of good practice it's like zen you can do it while watching a movie if you want nothing too crazy and then you get your brush and once you've gotten rid of it just kind of brush over it just to smooth it out and then you keep going so you're probably going to be about 10 to 15 minutes doing this but the beauty is after you've done it all, it's done, that's it. You can spray it or conductive coat spray it and then plate it or do what you want with it because um, you finished. It's, you know, you, all you're doing is kind of correcting the tiny little things. The rest of it's smooth anyway because you've done the acetone. So here's, a, here's the same thing. I've sprayed this one in graphite because I'm going to plate it. But essentially that's what you're getting. So. Uh, these are identical. This one was printed with infill. This one was printed without infill. I think there's about nine hour difference because of the infill and stuff like that. Like if you look at the back, this one looks like that. And this one looks like that. So, um, you can see the infill pattern slightly with the light on this one. This one has no light infill pattern because it has no infill. So there you have it. That's how you get nice smooth surface on a massive object without spending days sanding it. Another thing I'd like to add is that after acetoning it, the, the plastic is actually still pretty smooth. And um, if you dig your nail into it, it will leave a mark. So in terms of doing all of this kind of line scraping, which I've I kind of finished now, um, you may want to wait till it's properly hardened so that your scraping doesn't inadvertently leave marks because obviously when the plastic's soft you can accidentally actually damage the flat areas which you don't want to be doing but um, obviously the longer you leave it then that residue which is probably the impurities in the PLA um, does get a bit harder but it, it doesn't get that hard because I sh like I showed you the other one just a bit scraping and takes it off, but I might have actually damaged this one by doing a lot of like lazy scraping. But either way, I know it's going to come out alright because uh, I won't let it not come out alright. And I don't want to do another 45 hour print, I've got something else to, to print. So, um, yeah, alright, that's the end of my video. See you later.